Today we're talking the number one strategy in fantasy football drafts if you are picking from spots 7 through 12 in relation to super flex or two quarterback league drafts. Now, if you're in a one quarterback league draft, I would stick around because there's good player analysis. There's late round targets that I'm looking at. And I think you'll probably take a lot from this regardless. But we've also already done this video for one quarterback leagues, picks one through six and seven through 12. I will link those down below. Go check them out as well as I'll throw them on the end screen if you want to just hang out for the next 15, 20 minutes as I rip through five different drafts that I completed. So I did five different drafts that are all super flex and I was picking anywhere from the seven through the 12 spot and started cooking up some strategy. You know, I had to give y'all super flex fiends, which I am myself. All of my redraft leagues for the most part are super flex. I know I've been doing a lot of one quarterback type beats analysis here Today, we're doing super flex for the homies out there, for the ones that are really in the grind, in the grit. And by the end, we'll basically have broken down what my favorite strategy is for super flex drafts this year. If you're picking from 7 through 12, as well as just like the common players that I took at the end of the draft that I think you should stack the back of your roster with. Y'all know what comes next. Tuck your shirts in. Flex your traps. Stop yelling. <laughs> Real quick, these hats, we got about five of them in stock right now. So if you want to cop one, gold rope hat made from Egyptian woven, handmade, beautiful princesses out there, bdge.shop, they're probably going to go quickly. I want to start this video off with general, some strategy talk before jumping right into the actual drafts themselves. So the way fantasy drafts are kind of playing out this year as it relates to like skilled players, not quarterbacks, right? There's a consensus one-on-one for the most part, and it's Justin Jefferson. He's, he's the top pick in almost every draft. But I think deep down, it's like as a fantasy player, if there's not a consensus RB 101, then it doesn't really feel like the 101. You know what I mean? It's almost like, you know, uh, an NFL team who has the 101 in the actual NFL draft, but there's not a an Andrew Luck or, or a Trevor Lawrence or a Joe Burrow level talent at the top of the draft. It's like Baker Mayfield and you don't really know who deserves to be the 101. It's like, cool, you're hyped that your team has that pick. But it's like, damn, why couldn't have I had that pick last year or a year from now? It was like having the 101 in rookie drafts in like 2018 when Saquon came in. So in super flex drafts, obviously quarterbacks get pushed way up the board. And it's like, cool, I can get the 101 Justin Jefferson at like the 107, the 108, whatever. But I would have rather have had like the 2019 Christian McCaffrey at the 102, even in super flex. You know what I mean? With these types of drafts, they're a little, they're a little less objective on the strategy. Like when I did the drafts for the one quarterback leagues, right? One through six and then spot seven through 12, I felt really, really strongly about being able to kind of systemize my process and say, hey, this is probably the team I'll end up with in the first round, second round, third round. These are like the positions or players that we are targeting because ADP kind of stays the same. When it comes to super flex drafts, because quarterbacks get pushed so far up the board, skill players start to go all over the place. And there's a little bit less defined strategy because ADPs are, are, are more obscure. And it's much harder to predict when like a group of players or a specific player is going to go in a draft. So what I'm trying to do is basically put out bumpers for y'all. Get overall strategy where I'm seeing the quarterback run kind of end and where you want to be targeting certain positions like based on that stuff. So this will be a little bit more lenient a little bit more like overarching strategy than the way we did with those like one quarterback stuff. Now, my overall sentiment with super flex leagues, two quarterback leagues is that you don't need two elite quarterbacks to win your championship. You don't even need one elite quarterback to win your championship, but you need two worthy starters at the QB position and maybe a little bit of luck with when their big games hit. Here's some advice that I think is like simple yet actionable when drafting super flex leagues. What I would do is make your own quarterback rankings, right? I maybe go through like the top 22 fantasy QBs that you personally like this year. And if you're too lazy to do that, perfect. Cause we've got our draft guide done for y'all already. Cause we've got it for you. All right. We've got those quarterback rankings up there. And the easiest way to get that draft guide is by going to underdogfantasy.com or just getting the app down below and using promo code BDGE when you sign up and deposit $10 or more. They're going to double your deposit on their platform. Plus, you're going to get emailed out for free our draft guide with updates throughout the summer. So regardless, you can use our quarterback rankings. You can make your own quarterback rankings. But this is what I would do. I would pretend you're not in a super flex league. And I would look at it as if you're in a one quarterback league. And I would say to myself, all right, going down the list of rankings, what quarterback would be the last QB in my rankings that I would be comfortable having as my starter in a one quarterback league? 
For some people, that might be like the QB 11 at Tua. For some people, it might be Daniel Jones at 14. For some people, it might be like Derek Carr at 19. Whatever. That's This is more just overarching strategy that I think could be subjective to y'all. So if you rank your top 20 and then like QB 17 is the last guy on your list that you would take as your QB 1 in a one quarterback league, transfer that energy over to super flex leagues, meaning that last cutoff quarterback is who you want as your second starter on your team. So if you are comfortable with the QB 16 as your QB 1 in a one quarterback league, Make sure that you draft at least one other quarterback earlier than that guy in your rankings, and he could be your second quarterback. So if Aaron Rodgers is the QB 16 and he's the last guy you would be cool with at QB 1, make sure you drafted the QB 15 or the QB 11 or the QB 2. But have those two guys as your starters. That, I think, is the most like objective, simple way to look at super flex drafts, especially if it's your first time in there. You know, you're probably confused. You're like, hey, quarterbacks are ripping off left and right. Settle down. But they're not going to settle down. That's just not how super flex leagues work. It's the opposite of settling down. They are super flexing their traps. All right, I've talked enough. Let's get into the actual drafts. Let's get into the thick of things. Bear with me as we go through this video. I'm going to be probably jumping around some drafts a little bit using my shortcuts, command shift, bracket to the right, to the left. So sorry if we jump around a bit. But here is draft number one. I drafted from the 10 spot. I think the way it uh, ended up rolling out is all these are done on underdog. When you join the draft, you get automatically placed into a draft. This is the Pomeranian, but super flex. So if you're on the underdog app and you're on the home screen, you're just in the main lobby and you flip through the featured tournaments on there. The Pomeranian, but super flex. That's the one that we're doing here. They just launched it yesterday and it's like 40% of the way filled. It's only a $3 entry to draft and the rake is 0%. This is underdog given back to the goddamn community and you love to see it. 0% rake. They're taking nothing from it. First place is 30,000 bucks. Second place is 15,000. Third place is 10,000. So if you're looking to get ready for your super flex or two quarterback drafts, this is the single best place to do so. And again, if you deposit with code BDGE on your first time, $10 all the way up to $100, they're going to double your deposit. Plus you're getting our draft guide full free. So the first draft, we were at the 110. The next draft, we're at the 107. 107 again, 111 and 107. So we have three 17s. 110, 111. A little variety for y'all. So the first draft, we took T-Law at the 110. Now, the overall strategy, as you're going to see from four out of these five drafts, I went with a quarterback in the first round. So I went with T-Law, Fields, Herbert, Chase, and Fields. So the only draft that I took a wide receiver or a non-quarterback in the first round was in this draft where I went Jamar Chase at the 111. And I think the way I approached this was twofold. And I was kind of learning as they were going. So I was understanding the strategy of where we want to be targeting the quarterbacks. And basically the way that I just told you guys, like what's the last guy that you're kind of comfortable being your quarterback one in a super flex league? You will see that if you went quarterback early, and you decided to start fading the QB, you ended up really quickly with a quarterback two that you were not a fan of. Or like, I got T-Lot the 110. Great. Love him as my QB one. And I would have taken Herbert there. I would have taken Fields there. It's really, it ain't that deep. They're kind of in the same tier for me. But I waited all the way until Desmond Ritter at the 8-3. Now in these other drafts, here I went Justin Fields. In the third round, I went with Aaron Rodgers at the 3-7. Here, I went with Justin Herbert. In the fourth round, I got Derek Carr. Now, Derek Carr is probably like the cutoff for me of who I'd be okay with at QB2 in a super flex league. Am I ecstatic about having him as my starter? No, but he is more than fine. He'll probably put up 16, 17, 18 points per game. And that's what you're looking for in your QB2 uh, in a super flex league. Now, if you swapped him out for like a CJ Stroud, I know some people are high on CJ Stroud. The problem is a guy, a rookie like CJ Stroud, that's not like an up tempo, you know, high flying offense. CJ Stroud will probably be accurate. He'll have like a relatively good rookie year, but he'll have a ton of fantasy games where he probably throws for like 210 yards, one touchdown, and really give your team like 13 fantasy points. And at that point, you're almost better off using somebody else in the super flex spot. Now, the other thing to note is if you guys have been drafting on underdog, super flex type drafts that they have on their platform are a little bit different because they're less wide receiver heavy. That super flex spot actually takes out the third wide receiver. So the starting rosters for these leagues are one QB, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a super flex, and a regular flex. Whereas in the one QB drafts on the underdog platform, wide receivers go off so damn early. The strategy is a little bit different here. And in my opinion, I feel like it's probably more realistic to a lot of home leagues where the more casual type player loves running backs and takes them very, very early. So here I went Justin Herbert and then Derek Carr at the fourth. Here at the 111, I ended up taking Jamar Chase. I got Kirk Cousins in the second round, but as you can see, my second and third QB are Brock Purdy, Ryan Tannehill. Now, I was able to get Tannehill at the 7-11,
But as more people start to like move them up their rankings and recognize they actually have a nice little offense over there with Tannehill and D Hop and Trey Burks and Chiggy and Derrick Henry, he'll start moving up. He'll probably be in that like fifth round range. And I don't think it'll be as easy to get your hands on him. But overall sentiment here is like, I don't feel great when I have teams where I let quarterback slip past the fourth round. And I think that is kind of my biggest takeaway. I don't think it's necessary to grab a QB in the first round, but I would say if I would put like overall rules on the way Superflex leagues would go this year, I would say you want to leave the first two rounds with at least one QB and you want to leave the first four rounds with at least two quarterbacks. And here's one of the biggest reasons why that I think a lot of people overlook when it comes to super flex leagues. Because you're playing in super flex leagues and QBs start to get pushed really far up the board, you see really enticing skill players drop to places that you would never normally see them drop. This draft, for instance, after Trevor Lawrence, I was able to get Tyree Kill at the 2-3, Saquon Barkley at the 3-10, obviously that probably has to do a little bit more with the contract situation than super flex leagues but Saquon Barkley at the 310 Derrick Henry at the 43 I was able to stack Trevor Lawrence with Calvin Ridley at the 510 now in non super flex leagues on underdog Calvin Ridley is typically like the 310 so everybody kind of got pushed back one or two full rounds now this is great but the problem is the players are so damn enticing that you keep telling yourself, hmm, I'll wait one more round and then grab my quarterback. I'll wait one more round and then grab my quarterback. Let me wait one more round. You start stacking up these skill players, and before you know it, I'm telling you, this is this is a mental game. This is an emotional game. This is a psychological game as much as it is a flexor trap type game. Let me try to explain this to you uh, via another way, right, where – you don't want to draft the quarterback because it's kind of boring once you get to QB2. It's like, oh, I want to take Derrick Henry, not Derek Carr, right? It's almost like you're going on a diet and you fill your plate with broccoli and then you put rice and then steak on top of it. But if you really know what you're doing, you're going to go rice, steak, overload the plate with broccoli. That way you've got to actually eat through the broccoli and get your veggies in and get your vitamins and your goddamn minerals in before you get to the tasty stuff because a lot of times you eat the steak and the rice and then you're like ah, i'm kind of full who cares about the broccoli anyways or it's like if you work out a lot putting your core or ab exercises at the front of your workouts gives you a much larger chance of actually doing them than doing a full you know chest workout or back workout or legs workout and then saying ah, at the end of it at the end of the hour i'm gonna do a real abs or core workout very few times are you actually gonna go through with that now me i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do the whole thing but i know how y'all operate so think back about this when you're on the clock in a super flex league eat your goddamn broccoli first it's the same thing it's like damn let me just get the boring stuff out of the way first. Let me do the right thing. Let me eat my broccoli. Let me grab my quarterback two in the third or fourth round, and then we could have fun afterwards. Then we could eat the steak. Then we could throw some soy sauce on the rice because that's exactly what happened here. We took T-Law, and then I'm like, hell yeah, Tyreek. Hell yeah, Saquon. Hell yeah, Derrick Henry. Hell yeah, Calvin Ridley. Hell yeah, Joe Mixon. Hell yeah, George Kittle. And before you know it, I have Desmond Ritter as my QB too. Now, don't get me wrong. The stack I pulled off here is fucking beautiful. I got T-Law. I got Ridley. I got Evan Ingram. I got Zay Jones. Jacksonville is this year's Philadelphia. So I'm hype about this. However, the quarterback situation is fucked. It could work out. Anything could happen in football and fantasy football. The problem is there are many, many outs in which this team absolutely just shits the bed because I don't have a solid QB2. Desmond Ritter could easily get benched for Taylor Heineke at some point this year. Desmond Ritter could easily just throw the ball 22 times a game and average 12 fantasy points a game. Baker Mayfield could lose a starting job to Kyle Trask. He can get benched at some point this year. All of these things, when you're drafting, you're playing this range of outcomes game. You can have a take on a player, but when you get down to the 9th, 10th, 11th round or whatever, no one's take is good. That's why these guys are all the way down there because no one actually knows what the fuck is going to happen. First round, guys, we know what's going to happen. We know Trevor Lawrence is going to ball. We know Tyreek Hill is going to ball. We feel good about them. That's why we pick them early. But there's an outcome on this team where I just legitimately don't have a QB2. I could have taken Matt Stafford at the 4-3. Or even, you know, like at the 5-10, it's Calvin Ridley or it's like Brock Purdy or Sam Howell, Mac Jones. I don't even feel good about those guys, which is why for me, like the last group of QBs that I'm kind of comfortable having as my QB2 is that Russ, Derek Carr, Matt Stafford range. Now, for some of you guys, you might be in that like, Rodgers, Geno, Jared Goff range, where those are the last guys that you're comfortable with as your starters, guess what? You're going to have to spend two of your first three picks on those QBs, which I got no problem with. I'll leave you with that. First two rounds, leave with one QB. First four rounds, leave with two QBs. Now, if you can hit round five and you're good at quarterback, that means that you have selected at least one running back or at least one wide receiver. Like your skill players, you still have, some, you still have good skill players. And those 
five, six, seven rounds, five, six, seven, eight rounds, where all the skill players drop to, all the good players that would normally go in the third, fourth round, you're getting them at a round two round discount. Those parts of the draft should be left for flex plays, should be left for the running backs, the wide receivers, the tight ends, if you want to jump up and get one. The value in drafts is not quarterback at this range. The value in drafts are the skill players at this range. Aaron Jones at the 6'7", Kenneth Walker at the 6'6", Joe Mixon at the 6'3", J.K. Dobbins at the 7'5", Brandon Ayuk at the 7'12". Like, do you want Brandon Ayuk or do you want Desmond Ritter? It's pretty fucking easy to me. Now, here's an example where I picked from the 1'7", I took Justin Fields, and then Kelsey fell to me at the 2'6". Now, I'm not a tight end first kind of guy. I don't like using an early round pick on a tight end, but the 2-6, it was a little bit enticing. Now we got to mix things up a little bit. So we went Fields, Kelsey, Rodgers. We have our two quarterbacks through three rounds, and now we can get a little flexible with it. Devonta Smith at the 4-6. We got our RB1 and Najee at the 5-7. Y'all know I don't love Najee Harris, but I'll take him at the end of the fifth round as the RB1 that I feel comfortable with getting 250 touches, whatever. Christian Watson at the 6-6. And here's the, the last thing I will leave you with. You always want a third quarterback. Don't care if it's a redraft league. Don't care if it's best ball like underdog. I want a third quarterback, and I want one that's a bottom-level starter in the league. I don't want one that hopefully might get on the field at one point. I don't want Kyle Trask as my QB3. I want a Ryan Tannehill. I want a Mac Jones. I want a Sam Howell. I want someone that I know is starting that if my starting quarterback gets hurt or if they're on a bye, I can put someone in, and they'll get me at least like 14 points. So the way most drafts work out, I already told you my quarterback rules for rounds one, four, whatever. I would target your QB three in round seven or eight. As you can see, I got the last quarterback in this round. Tannehill at the 7-7. Seven, seven, there was not another QB picked until the 10-10, Baker Mayfield. So the seventh round is usually that like sweet spot. So you go quarterback early and then absolutely rip your team with flex plays throughout the middle of the draft. Now here, I don't necessarily love how the team turned out at the RB2 spot at least, but based on the fact that we got Kelsey first, we got Two strong starters at quarterback, having Devonta Smith, Christian Watson, Chris Godwin, Jameson Williams, Zay Jones, Alec Pierce, DPJ, Terrace Marshall, wide receiver. I really like that wide receiver group. The other thing, too, is Evan Ingram I grabbed as my tight end, too. But because there's two flex spots, there's both the tight end flex spot and the super flex flex spot, there's a good chance that Evan Ingram just finds his way into my flex spots multiple times throughout the year as well. But running backs behind Najee was James Cook. I like Jarek McKinnon, Devin Singletary, I, Jeff Wilson. I've been drafting so much of late. Keontae Ingram. So the, the RB2 hole kind of fell a little bit short here, but I think we'll be okay there. And we'll move on to the next draft. This was probably my favorite team that I drafted overall. I was drafting from the seven. I took Herbert at the seven. Again, Kelsey fell to me at the two six, so I took him there. Jalen Waddle fell to me at the three seven. I'm obsessed with him. You could have went with any of those players where Jalen Waddle went or the five after the four after him. Garrett Wilson, Devontae Adams, Jonathan Taylor, Tony Pollard would have been perfectly fine with there to get your first, you know, non tight end, non quarterback flex play. As I said, I wanted to make sure I got my QB two by round four. So we got Herbert and Derek Carr as our quarterbacks, Kelsey Waddle as our first two pass catchers, and again we got Najee at the end of the fifth round. Then Keenan Allen fell to me in the sixth. I was able to stack him with Justin Herbert. J.K. Dobbins as my RB two fell to me in the seventh. Again, Baker Mayfield, like I said, the QB3, you want in the seventh or eighth round. Traylon Burks in the ninth, Zach Charbonnet in the tenth, Zay Flowers in the eleventh, Elijah Mitchell in the twelfth, Zay Jones again, Zeke, Jeff Wilson, Rashi Rice, Jake Ferguson, Isaiah Likely. Like, I, I absolutely love how this team turned out. I don't think there are many weak points in it. We have two starting caliber worthy players at quarterback, Herbert and Carr, and then Baker Mayfield as our three. Travis Kelsey at tight ends, obviously a fucking stud. Jalen Waddell, Keenan Allen as our wide receiver one and two. Najee Harris, J.K. Dobbins as our running back one and two, and then we'll get a flex play between Traylon Burks, Zach Charbonnet, Zay Flowers, Zay Jones. We got double Zayed up, Elijah Mitchell, Zeke, Jeff Wilson. Like, I absolutely love how this team turned out. This is by far and away the favorite draft that I had here. The 11 spot. Now, this is the one that I went with a wide receiver first. We went Jamar Chase at the 111, then Kirk Cousins on the wraparound. Now, this is a spot where I would go. If you're at the 111 or 112, I think there's a tier drop off. You see the first eight picks in this draft where we went Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, Lamar, Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence. Those are like the clear top eight guys for me. And then there's a, a tier gap after that. So that's where I probably start to throw the Justin Jeffersons and the Jamar Chases in. Because I think anywhere from Tua, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins, they're the next tier of guys for me. You'll be able to grab one of those guys on the turnaround if you're at the 11 or 12, obviously. Now, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference because you'll be able to get a top wide receiver and a, and a quarterback in that tier, regardless of which way you really went. So if you have a preference, if you like Jamar Chase and Kirk Cousins, or would you have rather Deshaun Watson and Tyree Kill? That's kind of up to you. But if you're drafting at the very, very end of the first round, I like the wide receiver start if those first eight quarterbacks are off the board. And then I stack two running backs, Taylor, Tony Pollard, grabbed Amari Cooper. And again, see, I fucked up here. 
because I waited to grab my quarterback because all these spicy names kept falling to me. Jonathan Taylor in the third, Tony Pollard in the fourth, Amari Cooper in the fifth. You just kept saying to yourself, oh, my God, how can I pass up on this guy? How can I pass up on this guy? How can I pass up on this dude? You can't, but you have to. You got to eat the broccoli. In fairness, I ended up with Purdy and Tannehill, and I would actually be kind of fine with these guys as my QB2. As soon as we get to September, like Purdy and Tannehill will not be six, seventh round picks in super flex leagues by the time real drafts come around. Purdy, you'll you'll keep hearing reports about Purdy's going to be ready for week one. And he'll, he'll keep creeping up in super flex drafts. And Tannehill, again, I just think people are not realizing that he's going to be like a very stable, usable quarterback based on the actual offense that they have there. So I think those two guys easily move up at least one round, if not two rounds in ADP by the time real drafts come around. So realistically, I feel fine. I was able to get George Kittle, so I, I stacked him with Brock Purdy. It's gorgeous. Alvin Kamara every time in the ninth round. Elijah Moore in the 10th, Tyler Boyd, Sky Moore, Jalen Warren, Michael Gallup, Hayden Hurst, Zeke. That was the one wide receiver round. And then we have another Fields round. This was another one that I think I absolutely fucking teed off on. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think this was my favorite draft. Drafting from the seven, I was able to get Justin Fields. On the turnaround, I was able to get my wide receiver one in Stefan Diggs. I took my QB two in Derek Carr in the third round. And Derrick Henry fell to me in the fourth round at the 4-6, which I know a lot of you guys will be like, that's nuts. It'll never happen. It's not realistic, which which may be the case. But the point is, even if Ramondre fell to me there, I would have been happy taking him there. Probably would have been okay with like Josh Jacobs or Brees Hall, but obviously Derrick Henry would have been my pick of the litter there. Would have been fine with my RB1 being any of those guys in the fourth round. I was able to get Amari Cooper in the fifth round again, and TJ Hawkinson as my tight end one fell to me in the sixth. Miles Sanders in the seventh, and I and again, I got my QB3 in Baker Mayfield in the eighth. Jahan Dotson, George Pickens, and I kind of just started sprinkling in flex plays again. But this one is another roster where I don't feel like there are many holes in it, right? We have our starting quarterbacks in Fields and Derek Carr. We have our starting wide receivers in Diggs and Amari Cooper. We have our starting running backs in Derek Henry and Miles Sanders. We have our starting tight end, TJ Hawkinson. I actually feel like this is kind of like a bulletproof lineup. But again, it goes back to making sure that you grab that those two quarterbacks early so that you have a very well-rounded team. All right, so I hope that strategy was helpful. Again, it was a little more like overall strategy than it was player and exactly where guys are going in drafts relative to the one quarterback draft strategy videos because it's harder to do with Superflex because players are kind of going all over the place and people take a lot of different crazy strategies. But after doing a bunch of them this offseason, this summer, that's kind of like where I narrowed in on it. And you guys can start doing these drafts right now. Again, that tournament with 0% rake, $3 entry is on underdog right now on the homepage. And if you go sign up for underdog, if it's your first time on there, use code BDGE, they're going to double it. So if you put down 10, you'll get 20 on your account and you can literally do six of these drafts. I highly suggest not doing six of them at once. That's literally what I did during these drafts. I was going fucking back and forth between the tabs. Like shit was crazy, but you could do slow drafts. They have drafts where they're eight hours between picks. So you can just get notifications when you're on the clock, which are awesome as well, but this will fill up quickly. You throw down 20, you'll have $40 to play with, with promo code BDGE. And you get our draft guide absolutely free by signing up on Underdog. And real quick, I'm going to rip through uh, some of the players that I drafted three times at least throughout the five drafts because it lets you guys know who are my favorite like late round targets and who the favorite values are at those picks. A lot of times we could talk about players, but then when we're on the clock and we're actually in drafts, we really expose to ourselves how we feel about them. I wrote down the five teams that I drafted and I bolded anyone that I took in at least three of the five drafts. So Baker Mayfield was my QB three in three of the five drafts. Keontae Ingram, I took at the end of three of five drafts. Now, Keontae Ingram is kind of interesting. Like, I liked him coming out of college. Now, he is the he is like the clear RB2 in Arizona, and it's only a matter of time before James Conner kind of breaks down or they just go into full rebuild mode there. And I get that it's exciting to, like, go after, you know, the Dwayne McBrides, who are the guys going around that same ADP as Keontae Ingram. But, like, Keontae Ingram is the RB2 there, whereas Dwayne McBride, we're, like, hoping, and I like McBride. I think he's, like, a really skilled runner, but... We're like one, Alexander Madison could just straight up be the workhorse there. Two, Ty Chandler could be the two. Dwayne McBride could be anywhere from like the second running back all the way to not even make the team, right? He was a late round draft pick. There's a chance he doesn't make the team. So as much as I'm like yelling about Dwayne McBride, I think taking guys like Keontae Ingram, who we know what their role is with upside is probably a smarter play. So Ingram's a dude that I was targeting at the end of rounds. Zay Jones, y'all know I love him. I took him three times in these drafts. And Isaiah Likely was the only one of this group that I took four times. He has been my tight end three in just about every draft on underdog. So Isaiah Likely ended up on four of my rosters. So those are the dudes I drafted more than three times. You know, you guys can kind of just like pause the video if you want to take a deeper look at the team. There's a ton of guys I drafted twice, but that doesn't scream to me as much as the three-time drafters, the three-time offenders. All right, so uh, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this ended up being kind of long, but I hope it was helpful for y'all that are in Superflex two quarterback leagues. Come draft with us on Underdog. We are putting links into the Discord for you guys to come draft with us all the time. So get on Underdog. Use code BDGE. Join the Discord. Free to join. Go cop the draft guide. If you're in a state that's not eligible for Underdog, it's also on BDGE.shop where you will also find the where you will find these hats too. All right. And if you're in one quarterback leagues, remember we did the draft strategy video, the same thing for picks one through six and then seven through 12 for those. And I'll do this same video next Monday for picks one through six in Superflex League. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. See you tomorrow for running back rankings, top 24 tiered up.